Welcome back to the Elsa Raw podcast. Today, I had a lady called Sam Simmons to join me. She's an absolute powerhouse and she's the co-founder of the Gen M Collective. Gen M is the menopause partner of brands. And I'm going to let the conversation speak for itself. It's incredible. She's amazing. I'm a big fan of hers and enjoy. Hi, Sam. Thanks for joining us. It's great to see you. Good to be here. Thanks so much. Mm. I know you've made the trip from London this morning, which is not easy to get here in Liverpool the first thing in the morning. So I appreciate that. Um, but I've loved getting to know you over the last couple of years. For anybody who doesn't know who Sam is, she is an absolute powerhouse. And I use that term gets thrown around for so many people at the moment, but you actually are a bona fide powerhouse in my opinion. You've had a 30 year career um, in one of the best known brands that we all know, Innocent Smoothies. Well, you've had a career before that, but you started at Innocent when it was like a startup, was that right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was only going for a couple of years. I just spent nearly 10 years working in the States in Manhattan, which was amazing. That's probably another story over a glass or two of wine. But no, that was a fantastic experience professionally and personally. But when I came back from the US, I bumped into an old mate who said, I've got three guys you really need to meet. And um, I met them and just sort of fell in love with them, their brand, their energy. And Innocent was uh, camping out, for want of better description, in an old converted warehouse in West London. And it was really grungy, but in a good way. Yeah. And um, yeah, I said, I'll come, I'll come for a little while and help you sort some stuff out. And nearly 20 years later, I've only just hung up my bootstraps. <laughs> you know, it's, it's incredible. A brand like that, that really had so much potential and just grew and grew and grew. It was just a brilliant, it, it felt a real privilege actually to be part of that company. It's an amazing business success story, mm. what the guys have done, what the whole team has done, really. Mm. It's like a brand that you see in every single shop, every single retailer globally. I mean, it's in the US as well, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, Japan, China, yeah. which was my last job, you know, setting setting it up overseas. So yeah. It's such a simple idea as well. Yeah, squash, you know, fruit and veg in a bottle. That's literally it. Mm. And it's uh, it's... It's amazing. I love everything about it. I love the branding. I love um, the success story online, the mm. way it's written, the sense mm. of humor that's mm. adopted by the brand. Yeah. It's an absolute masterclass in yeah. how to get that like tribal community. Yeah, it is. And, you know, when the boys were recruiting, um, they were recruiting effectively their mates. They had a set of values that they recruited by. In fact, we did everything by this set of values. If you made a decision, you'd use these values. If you were, as I say, recruiting, if you were choosing a supply chain partner, you'd use these values. And it really, really worked. And we spoke to each other like we would speak to our mates. And that's how the tone of voice evolved. Yeah. And the guys that did and still do the social media were off the charts you know, yeah. the humor and the belly laughs that we would have. It it was just the best place to work. Yeah, you know, it, which, looks, yeah. it looks amazing. Yeah. And you're saying about those values, that is so important to a brand, any brand that's starting off. What, how would you create those values? Would you write them down and anybody coming into that business, would they, you know, get a training manual with those values? Or was it just kind of, you just drilled that culture into them from the beginning? <laughs> Oh, that's a really good question. I I think people inherently have those values. Mm. You know, you you can't I don't think you can make people have those values. No. I think they have those inherently and you provide a wonderful culture and an environment and a growth mindset culture and environment where no idea is a silly idea. You empower everybody to be the best version of themselves they can be, no micromanagement. Then that just grows organically. And it, it, when you see it and you feel it and you're part of it, I've got goosebumps bump, thinking about it now. It is amazing. Mm. you know. And I think what Innocent did, it really attracted and retained some of the best talent in the industry. Uh, and the people that I met and coached, developed, led, again, just such a privilege. I learned so much from them. Age is just a number. You know, experience comes from all sorts of walks of life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything down to the headquarters is 
Lovely. Yeah. I, I watched the YouTube video on the headquarters. And actually, I missed the opportunity to go down there. Couldn't get a babysitter to come down. Thought leader event. Yeah, the thought oh, leader event in the summer. Yeah, you were missed, but <sighs> it was brilliant. They were fantastic. They were so generous. And we hosted our summer event there. But again, you know, the environment speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. You walk in and you can't help but be inspired because of what's on the walls and just the way the people are. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's a very, very special place. And the Innocent alumni are just a brilliant network. Again, just so lucky to have them. Yeah. No, it's wonderful. Mm. Great success story. It's incredible. And mm. you should be so proud about what you've done. I'm sure you are. Yeah. But you did touch on this. You hung up your boots there last September. And that was to focus on your current business now, which is how we met, mm. which is uh, Gen M. Yeah. So yeah. for anyone who doesn't know what Gen M is, do you want to explain what it is? Yeah, no, thank you. I'd love to. So Gen M, we are the menopause partner of brands and we exist to inspire and empower businesses to do more to better support the midlife audience going through perimenopause and menopause. And this business was a seed of an idea, as is often the way when two friends get together. We happened to be in the sun with a bottle of rosé, but <laughs> um, we were both, Heather, Heather Jackson and I, my co-founder, we'd both had a really troubling time with our perimenopause. I mean, I think if we're honest, we were woefully unprepared for it, yeah. which I've got to say, I was a bit embarrassed. You know, it hit me like a steam train and I was traveling globally for Innocent. I started to have some symptoms that I just didn't recognize um, in me. Yeah. Uh, so when I started to Google it, I realized what you know, frankly, a bloody disparate landscape it was. There was very little support out there, no credible information. I'm I'm going back sort of 2018. Yeah. And when I bumped into Heather in London, which was, you know, quite, um, you know, quite unusual for us to be in the same place at the same time, she won't mind my saying this. I mean, you've met Heather. Yeah. She's incredibly glamorous, very vivacious. Yeah. She looks shocking. And I said to her, oh, my God, you know, what's up with you? And she just burst into tears. And yeah. she was at a really, really low point. So we spent some time together and we started to chat. And when I listen to her, I'm a couple of years older than Heather, something she loves to, you know, to share any opportunity. <laughs> so I'll get in there quick with that. But she just said to me, oh, my God, thank God thank God you've you've diagnosed me. I'm perimenopausal. And she gave me a massive hug. And I sort of said to her, well, good luck with that, you know. So we, we're both driven, really driven, yeah. and both solution focused. And I think we both felt that we hadn't got to our early 50s to be overlooked and to feel invisible. And we felt we deserved better. So we decided to do something about it. Now, at that time, we both knew that two perimenopausal women in their 50s, we weren't going to change the world by being subjective and anecdotal. So I said, because I am a bit nerdy and I do like data, I said, let's do some research. Let's see how other women in midlife are feeling. So we commissioned some research, which we called the Invisibility Report. And you've read it. Yeah, the, it's really robust, very uh, thorough and an incredible body of work. Yeah, mm. it, it, it really, thank you. It yeah. really, it needed to be yeah. because with that, we then had the confidence to launch Gen M and it amplifies the voices of women up and down the country. It really does. It's so compelling. And I think when we read some of this data, you know, 90% wanting more from brands, 88% feeling just underserved and overlooked. The stat that really tugged at my heartstring was over 41% feeling invisible and mm. irreplaceable and, you know, basically done with life. I just thought that that just that just is not acceptable. So we launched Gen M with an open letter uh, to The Guardian in October 21. And within six months, we had 40 brands on board. 
you know, big brands, yeah. uh, M&S, Next, Co-op. We had yourselves on board, which yeah. is where we first <laughs> met. I mean, you know, it isn't all about big business. It's about all brands that are responsible and want to do more to better support this audience coming on board and doing it as a collective, doing it collaboratively. And that's what's most exciting. And in 20 months, we've now got 90 brands on board and growing weekly. So I really did have to make a decision and Gen M really became my priority. And I left Innocent in September last year. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like an idea, a passion project mm. that's now becoming, well, I'm sure it's going to become a huge, amazing commercial beast. It already, it's got two incredible women behind it in you and Heather. I can see how driven and passionate you both are. And that is one of the reasons that I wanted to get involved um, when I first heard about it, because a lot of it mirrored what I was saying with my own brand without even knowing kind of the landscape. I, before I started Elsa Ra, I sat there and spoke to four, 45 different women of which I just put an Instagram post out. I said, if anybody would give me a bit of their time, I'd love that. So uh, I, I need some help with marketing. I hadn't launched this brand. I was doing it on a shoestring. This was a lockdown project. But what I knew is you don't know anything about this market. So let other people tell you what mm. they want. Mm. And all their answers became my entire uh, kind of marketing idea it became the tone of voice that I used mm. and I reflected their words mm. back to them mm. in, you know, what we were trying to do. You have to kind of get that data and you have to speak to the right people mm. um, in order to serve them. So when I kind of, when I heard about you guys and I read the invisibility report, I thought, yeah, absolutely. Because all those ladies I spoke to, this was like, you know, that was a microcosm of what I'm reading now yeah. in this invisibility yeah. report. They feel invisible. There was one lady who said, I know I've only got 20 Christmases left. Oh. And I was like, oh my God, that's a sobering thought. Yeah. And she was like, well, that's how I feel. Yeah. And um, she felt unconfident. She said she couldn't. There was another lady who said, I can't go into a bar anymore, like walk into a busy bar. I've got no confidence to oh, do that. Yeah. Yeah. She used to have to get her friend, she would ring her friend and say, I've arrived. And her friend would come out and she would walk in with her friend. It's little things like yeah, that. But that's on, massive. Yeah, on such a low level. Yeah, that's massive. And I think, you know, I don't want to sit here and just quote stats at you because you know that I will because yeah. I do love a stat. But, you know, the whole piece around authentic representation is also massive in the report. Women don't recognize themselves. I think it was over 65% said they just don't recognize themselves when brands are marketing to them. And over 70% had never seen anything relating to midlife, perimenopause and menopause. And I just said to Heather, you know, we agreed, how... How can this be right? Menopause is not a choice. It is a natural transition yeah. that 15 and a half million of us in the UK, 1 billion globally by 2025, will be going through at any one time. I mean, that's a lot of people. And as I say, it's a natural transition. And we want to, we want to thrive in this period. We yeah. don't want to just survive. He Heather always has this lovely quote where she wants to swing from the chandeliers rather than hang from them. And I, you know, I get it. I really quite like that because we've got so much value to give. And it's the confidence thing and it's the lack of authentic representation that is a big, big issue, actually. If I see m one more 30-something or 40-something or 50-something airbrushed to look, you know, unlike what they really look like in life, you just switch off. Yeah. You just switch off. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Grey hairs and wrinkles are all part of the journey. You I, know? If anybody's listening to this, I am constantly asking people all the time who look real, to be my models, yeah. like all the time. And I've given up now asking online because the only people who put their hands up are like super glamorous, seen it all before, yeah. amazing. But the best place I've picked up two women recently is the John Lewis Cafe. So I Excellent. go in and now I've got a little baby. It's very yeah. disarming because yeah. I think it'll go, oh, your baby's so cute. And I'm thinking, brilliant, I wanted to talk to you. And I'll sit there in John Lewis Cafe and start chatting. I'm like, oh, what do you do? Blah, blah, blah. We get talking. And then I'm like, listen, have you ever thought about, you know, 
doing any modeling. They're like, oh, you're joking me, blah, blah, blah. They, you know, I give them a business card. I'm like, this is my business card. Have a love what we do. Yeah. And I'd love you to model for me one day. Anyway, I always live in hope that they'll get in touch. Yeah. Two of them have. And these are two women. There was one only, she was, in Brist, she was from Bristol and only in the city for one day, but she's amazing. I was mm. like, oh my God, I feel like we we're meant to meet. So I am completely on board with you. Yeah. I there was there's two ways you used to see menopausal women. One, the old like Elle McPherson, look at me, amazing. You can look like me, you've take this. Not reality. <laughs> or two, if you go on like Google images and type in menopause, you'll see a woman like holding her head in her hands, looking frazzled and all the rest of it. I'm like, where is the ones in between? Because I know this is not the women that I know who are going through this, yeah. you know? You said yourself as well, when you kind of were going through perimenopause, it hit you like a steam mm, train mm. and you're at the peak of your career, mm. you mm. know? And I think it's such a cruel mistress, really. You're at the, you get into the top of your game, you know, not, we talk about the gender pay gap all the time. We talk about maternity pay gap, you know, you, your husband can carry on climbing the career ladder while you take time off to go and have a baby, whatever. Then you get in the menopausal pay gap as well. And it's like, you can be just getting to the crest, the peak of your career. And then you feel like you're let down by your body, by your hormones, yeah. your cognitive functions in decline. And it must be scary. Yeah, it is. No, it absolutely is. And I think that's a really interesting point because again, the women we surveyed, you know, what I think is interesting, there are 48 symptoms and signs of the menopause. So few people know that. Less mm. than 50% of the women we surveyed could name three of the symptoms. And these symptoms are physical, they are emotional, they're psychological. And it's those that are really hard to see, of course. And it's those that impact your confidence. Yeah. And anxiety really kicks in on steroids um, for most women. So I think if you are working, it doesn't really matter whether you're working or not, but if you are working and you are at the top of your game, it is a very, very cruel period. It can be because you do lose your confidence mm. and you don't recognize yourself. And 90% of women, again, that we surveyed said that that had happened to them. And I think what is really sad is that the 40 to 50-year-old demographic is the fastest growing woman in the workplace today and 25% are leaving because yeah. they haven't got the support that they need. So I think back to the brands, you know, when I was realizing that I was perimenopause, everything changes. You know, we were chatting about hair earlier, but my hair never, never gave me any issues. It just did its own thing, which I was cool with. But when you hit perimenopause, it really became unruly and I couldn't find anything to sort of control it, which is where I, why I normally always wear it up. You know, right. your skin changes, your nails change, um, everything changes. The clothing that you choose to wear because you're often hot or the bedding that you um, prefer because, you know, again, you can have night sweats. Everything has to be thought about. So when you put perimenopause and menopause into these search engines for these large brands that you've been loyal to all of your life and nothing comes up, you get a bit frustrated. And that frustration then turns to anger. Mm. But rather than be angry, Heather and I decided to channel this and set up you know, Gen M. And that's why having these brands on board that have the power, if you think about it, they have, they have the most amazing employees. They have huge consumer bases. Most of them have big budgets. And if we all come together and get behind raising awareness and better educating and providing signposting and support, it's got to be better, surely. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, I think it completely agree with you. Yeah. And the only way I can relate to it, I'm very much in the menopause space. I know what's coming when it happens. And I can completely empathize with the ladies who go through it. And I speak to them all day, every day. The only way I can relate and really relate it even more was when I got pregnant, mm. um, which was only like last year. So and I realized I, I'm not an anxious person, never suffered with anything like that. I didn't understand anxiety, didn't know what it was until I had a baby. Mm. And I'm, it hit me like a steam train, that wave of anxiety. Like I couldn't, I was like, I didn't even want anybody around at the house bar my partner. Mm. I was like, no, I don't want anyone there. I'd stop touching my baby. Stop asking to touch my baby. Do you know what I mean? Just mm. like this 
like, I don't know, I turned into like a, a lioness with a cub. But I used to be so anxious. I remember being like, Danny was like, come on, let's go for dinner. And we were in San Carlo. It was two weeks. I'd just had a cesarean and I was just like in tears because I was like, I just want to leave. Like, mm. this is not right. Mm. And I can, now I know what true anxiety feels yeah, like. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wow, if that's how people feel like mm. when they go through menopause, I can completely mm. empathize with that even more now. And yeah. the other one that comes up a lot um, is driving anxiety. Mm. <laughs> Lots of ladies say to me, I just don't want to drive anymore. My mum is one of them. Mm. Um, she will not, you know, she drives like, I'm like, come on, Jesus Christ. She's like driving at the speed of a snail. And she's like, you don't get it. Like, you don't get it. She mm. gets driving anxiety. Whereas before she was very confident. Yeah. And I think, wow, I just. No, it, 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 it is a thing, you know, it is a thing. And I, you know. HRT is talked a lot about, yeah. isn't it now? And look, I, I, I think if you look through the medical lens or the political lens or the celebrity lens, it's fantastic that mm. we're now talking more about this period in our lives. It is good. But just because awareness is going up, it doesn't mean that the lived experience is better. In fact, yeah. our data tells us that it's going backwards. There's a lot to do. But anxiety, even if you decide to take HRT, even if you can take HRT, for a lot of the women that we speak to, it's not a silver bullet. Oh, no. You know, a lot of these symptoms don't go away. I felt anxious getting up this morning to get the train. And yeah. I'm like you. I've traveled the world. Mm. I mean, I I am very fiercely independent. Yeah. I've never experienced anxiety and it's horrible. Mm. And the driving thing is real. Yeah. I used to think nothing about driving into London. I drove into London and back every day, 11 miles to and from work. Don't like it now. Yeah. I find it very stressful. Mm. So it is a thing. You know, it is a thing. Um, I it's think difficult. we really need to understand our hormones. I say this week in, week out on, on this. It's kind of like what I've spent my life reading and dedicating my all my free time to. Yeah. And also being able to harness your hormones. If you know where you are in your hormonal cycle, whether that be monthly, yearly, over a life period, you can really harness it. Um, it drives all your behavior, mm. all of your behavior. Mm. And if you know that, then you can do things to, to kind of offset it. But people don't realize. They just go, oh, I, d I don't know. I don't, I've done it. You know, and, and when I started looking back at when hormones were discovered and it, the hormonal defense tried to get used in a few court cases, you know, people were like, well, we didn't know why we did it. We'd, we'd create these horrible murders. Um, there's some fantastic books. I speak about them like every week on here uh, that you can read. But I think once we know the kind of what's going on and your hormonal profile, like I said, within the month, within your lifetime, you can really, really offset it, whether that is with HRT, whether that is through diet, lifestyle. I mean, diet mm. and lifestyle is mm. critical. Oh, it is. Well, it absolutely is. And I, I, I also know, again, through our research that, you know, 49% of women will choose, you know, not to, to go towards HRT for yeah. the first port of call, choosing more natural holistic solutions. So that's why, again, brands have such an important and major part to play. Yeah. You know, they really do. Because even if you're on HRT, you still need other products to support you. And all hormonal health is just only just getting started, isn't it, really? The yeah. knowledge that we have around it yeah. and what we're understanding and what we're learning and what we're reading. And diet and lifestyle, uh, how we exercise, how we eat, it's all such a critical part of the mix, for sure. Yeah, yeah. and I think it... I say this all the time, please go weight training to most women, every yeah. single woman I meet, actually. I'm like, if you're above the age of 30, you need to be weight yeah. training, yeah. you have to... These are the things that uh, it's a big difference between getting off the couch at 70 and not, mm. you know, it's a, massive. Uh, if you, if you're going to fall down, mm. it's the difference between breaking a hip and not, mm. you know, bone density goes down. We know that we know when your estrogen drops, bone density goes down. So will your muscle tissue offset that as early as you can get into good habits. I don't think these, the, the lifestyle protocols are spoken mm. about enough. Sleep is another big one. Mm. You know, a lot of, 
I mean, sleep. I was listening to a podcast this morning with a guy who's trying to reverse his aging. And he said his whole life before he does anything is geared up around his sleep. So everybody in his life knows he goes to bed at 8.30. And he said everybody else's life, sleep, is the one that could be knocked around, you know, it's like, mm. well, I've got work to do, so I'll have put off bedtime. He's like, you have to live your life the other way around. Yeah. Because it has the biggest effect on your conscious life. Mm. Um, and that's a big thing in menopause. Nearly every lady I speak to says they struggle with sleep. Yeah, it's it's huge. So I think understanding what you can do to mm. give yourself the best shot, but also I think there's a, there's a, no surprise that night sweats are in the top five yeah. sim, most common symptoms. And there are some fantastic brands out there using the technology that's been around. I mean, I know you exercise regularly. I exercise regularly. There's some fantastic textiles around that can really help with sweat wicking and yeah. keeping cool. But it's like an eco chamber. Mm. You know, what you wear in bed, the sheets that you have. And, and there are some brilliant brands doing some great stuff out there. They just need to join the collective and yeah. get better at signposting. Because the problem is when you go through perimenopause and you're finding your way and you're learning about it, you've got brain fog, you're really tired because you're sleep deprived, mm. you need all the help you can get. Trust yeah. me, you really do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> and if you've been with a brand, let's say m &S, you know, that's like my first go-to. John Lewis is another one, that bit, especially when I got pregnant. Mm. These are the times when you need those brands to handhold you. Yeah. So I went into John Lewis, they're talking me around these prams, they're talking about, oh, you'll need this and you need this sterilizer. And it's like a machine gone at me because mm. I, I spent my life ignoring everybody's babies around me. Yeah. I was just never interested, it just was not for me. Wasn't didn't really have that maternal instinct. So when it happened to me getting pregnant, I thought, oh God, I don't know anything about this world. So I needed those brands to handhold me. Yeah. The same is yeah. happening to so many women with menopause mm -hmm. and you need those brands to handhold you and signpost you yeah. in store and online. You do, and they're not. And they're not. No, and it's not good enough. Mm. Uh, you know, it really isn't good enough. And they do need to wake up and yeah. realise that, you know, let's be, let's talk money. There's a menopausal pound out there. Yeah. It's really hard with all the headwinds that businesses are facing, isn't it? Yeah. To, to retain and grow your market share. There is a menopausal to pound to be had because we, at this age, we control the household, you know, spend yeah. more often than not. We have got disposable income and we are really prepared to support brands, be loyal to brands, provided that they have our backs yeah. and, and help us during this period too. And because there are 48 symptoms and signs, as I said earlier, everything changes. Wouldn't it be brilliant if you could walk into an m and or a John Lewis and have that exact same service that you have when you're pregnant? Exactly. I mean, that would be success. But today, yeah. by the time you get to your perimenopause and menopausal age, it's almost as if you've fallen off a cliff. Mm. And Which, it's ridiculous. It, it can is, last up to 15 years. Exactly. You know, it's... And that's a lot of pounds. That is a lot of pounds. I know. Look, look how much you spend on skincare, mm. you know, monthly. Yeah. So if you then need products, because your skin changes, like, you know, so now you're going to go into different kind of skincare. So, I, you know, yes, you've got like mum and baby floor. I'm just picturing John Lewis in my head here. But, you know, you could have a section, the menopause section, which has got like moisture wicking pajamas. Absolutely. And bedding. Yeah. And um, I don't know, skincare that's more set up, mm. shampoos, conditioners, mm. and everything else, supplements, anything else that would support a lady's journey. And an expert stood there talking about yeah. it. Well, this is great for this brand. If that's not in your price range, maybe this one, this one, this one. Yeah, absolutely. To complement any medical advice that you, yeah. you, know, you need and that you want to seek as well. So I, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, once again, backed by our research, we, um, we fast-tracked the launch of the world's first menopause friendly symbol because of that in February. So our research, um, as you know, Alyssa, we put our invisibility report back out into field every year to yeah. see how the landscape is shifting because we've created a dial and we really do want to see how things are changing. And when it came back out of research at the back end of last year, we couldn't believe it. You know, 78% said that, yes, they would absolutely shop 
by a menopause-friendly symbol, and they were basically demanding it. So Heather and I said, right, well, we'll launch it, and we'll launch it now. And the other stat that blows me away every time I look at it, particularly as someone that's always worked in the food industry, there are about 4% of the population in the UK today that are vegan. And I know how much money, millions of pounds, go into innovating marketing and supporting the vegan consumer, which is great. You know, I have no issue with that whatsoever. 20% of the population in the UK are menopausal. So where's our innovation? Where's our marketing? Where's our signposting? I'll tell you what you need. You know, a Netflix documentary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we That's have, what you do. We like, look at how much propaganda, yeah. right, the vegan, mm. the vegan group got yeah. out there. Yeah. You had forks over knives. You had cowspiracy. Yeah. You had game changers. Yeah. You had all these big Everything. documentaries, right, that yeah. really helped the vegan movement, mm. you know, it, it became like, then you had, then celebrities got on board because it came, you know, Ariana Grande and Beyonce. Yeah. You know, wait till Beyonce gets menopausal. Yes, no, that's, absolutely. That's what you, that, but unfortunately, I'm sorry, it's commercial beast and that's what people are yeah. waiting, maybe that's what people are waiting for. Yeah. You know, why haven't you got a thousand brands <laughs> on board? They're waiting, you know, till it becomes this yeah. big. It will come. Big, uh, it's got, oh, it's going yeah, to it come. Will, and I love the whole Netflix thing. I'll get onto that on the train well, on the maybe, way back. Well, <laughs> well, this is the thing. And I think, well, you could do even a BBC Three documentary to follow you and Heather around, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, making noise about what, yeah. are you, what you guys are doing. Because, yes, you had the Davina effect, mm. but it was all... HRT, HRT, HRT. It was quite, I, I mean, I don't know what you thought about that, and I'd love your view, but I I take my hats off to Channel 4 yeah. and Davina. I think, I think it was fantastic, but it did feel quite negative because what Gen M is here to do is to put a bit of a positive spin on it. Exactly. We don't, know, I don't want to be scared about no. going into this stage of life, you know, it, and, and terrified about what's going to happen. I'm thinking my partner's going to leave me because he's not going to understand and he's not going to want to listen to it and he's going to be, you know, whatever. I'm, go I'm not going to be able to drive anywhere because yes. I'm going to hate it. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to enjoy <laughs> sex anymore. I'm not want it. My hair's going to fall out. My nails will be awful. I'm going to, you know, this is what I, I see all yeah, day long. Yeah, exactly. And it can't be that. It no. cannot be that. So we really are you know, very focused on the right tone of voice and empowering women yeah. to be the best that they can be. And the brands have a massive, massive part to play in that. Yeah. They really do. So the MTIC, you know, it's really early days. And I did just want to say, I think that you were one of the first, if not the first, to use the MTIC and how you how you use it, your communication, it's it's a role model. It's a case study. It's brilliant. You are our poster child and brand it's, it is, <laughs> no it is fabulous because it's authentic and it's what all we want all brands to look at and see and do and that's why having smaller brands in the mix is so brilliant because you're agile yeah. you're tenacious well I, I thought that is the beauty of being a small brand yeah. I also I also doesn't matter how big we get I want the small brand agility yeah forever you know yeah you've got want, to keep that yeah I don't yeah. want investors giving me a yes or no. No, I don't want that. It's no. like, my, I'm driving the ship and I want to go like that quickly. Yeah. I remember being sat there as you're launching Gen M and I'm sat there uh, in the meeting. I've already texted Kelly saying, um, this is what it looks like. Can you just prepare the graphic designer to be able to, when we get the files for it, be able to put it on immediately. And that is actually, as you're talking to it, I've already yeah. texted it and then it's there. Yeah, which is brilliant. You know brilliant. what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's how quick we can react. Yeah, exactly. And it looks amazing. Yeah. And it, but, you know, we launched in Feb and we've got now 40 brands deploying it. We've got some 500 SKUs, yeah. you know, with the MTIC. So, you know, it's still really early days, but it's great. Yeah. It really is great. And, um, you know, we will just keep focused on encouraging as many brands as possible to use it because we have aspirations for it to be as recognisable as the Vegan V. And why shouldn't it be? Yeah. You know, we want menopause Or the, the Leaping Bunny, the Pizza Bunny. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And I think it will be. Yeah. It's a bigger market. 
It's a massive market. And it's every single female will go through it. Yeah. So I don't think you need to worry. I think you just need to worry about... I mean, the one thing I'll say about you is you've just got no ambition, Sam, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Must, must try hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing I was going to bring up is uh, this gets laid at everyone's door because obviously brands are getting on board with menopause. Mm. They call it meno washing, mm. you know, and yeah. people, including Davina, have been quite vocal about, you know, well, brands are just jumping on the bandwagon to um, make money out of misery. Mm. Well, I disagree with that completely. Mm. Uh the only way products get better and the only way customers and the audience and women get served better is by making it commercial, Yeah, is by making it innovative, create more competition, that then competition has to get better because mm. they have to outdo their competition. Definitely. And who wins? Yeah. The customer at the end. Yeah, absolutely. And look... It's a really good point that you raise. I think the whole meno washing debate is bull. You yeah, know, I really do. I, I had my experiences. It's why I set Gen M up. I couldn't find product. I think it has to be done, though, in a credible way with transparency. So we actually worked with uh, one of our found, founding partners, Boots. We worked with the legal team. And they helped us to define menopause friendly. They helped us... Um, define the set of criteria that a product has to meet. So I have absolutely no concerns and no issues at all with our MTIC and our criteria. A brand has to demonstrate that they have the data, they can meet the rationale uh, to be able to carry it. But you know, provided you've got that and you've got a product that is responsible and credible, then there's no problem. And consumers can then choose. Yeah. I think the the challenge with this is that it can never be an accreditation because what works for me won't work for another lady that's in a similar time of life. We all have to try things to see what works for us. It's about choice and control. And this MTIC, the menopause friendly symbol, is there to signpost women to products products that they can choose, try, and then continue with if they find it works for them. I mean, look at your trust pilot reviews. Yeah. You can't argue with that. Who, who, you know, who has a right to turn to you and say, I think that's meno washing. Yeah. When you've got thousands of women all using your product, using it consistently and feeling a million dollars. Yeah. Up. And there will be so many other products out there that exactly. are carrying the MTIC who, uh, you know, for which is working for other other yeah. women. So, no, I don't listen to that. I focus on what I think is important and it's integrity, it's credibility and it's transparency. Yeah, 100%. Mm. It's funny you should say that. I was talking to my joiner the other day and he was like, tell me about your pill, Alyssa. Because <laughs> he was asking me for about his wife. And I was like, yeah, we have great results. Works for some women really well. Might not work for some others. And he's like, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Some people can get drunk off 10 pints and some that never touches them. And I'm like, <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> that's a great analogy, yeah. yeah. But that is true. What works for one woman might not work for no, the other. But exactly. the choice needs to be there. It does. Um, and that's that, that's kind yeah, of what the M takes about. It's signposting you to that. It does. And I think, you know, look, there's no doubt that the midlife sector is here and it's going to continue to grow. There is absolutely no doubt about that. If you just go back, I'm a bit older than you, you won't remember this, but I can remember the fitness um, market in the 80s. Oh my God, it was horrendous. It was just men with massive muscles. It was women in... Like the Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. era, Rambo era. It, you know, it was women in headbands and matching... Um, leg leotards, warmers and yeah. leotards. It was pretty, you know, uninspiring. And now look at it. It's absolutely phenomenal and it's grown and it's it's a booming, booming market. It was the same for vegan. You know, vegan was so uninspiring. It was pretty sad, actually. And now you've got you know, fashion that is very much focused on the alternative. Stella McCartney has had a very nice and continues to have a very nice career out of non-animal based products. Mm. I just think that this menopause market is here and it will continue to grow and we've got to embrace it. And brands that don't, I really do think will miss out. Well, 100%. Mm. And I go back to thinking about maternity. Okay. So yeah, M&S, all these other brands, 
They had loads of maternity products in there. Maternity tights, maternity clothes, this, that, the other. Mm. Um, it's get, it's coming though. I was in Primark the other day. In fact, the, the, the nighty that I gave birth in was a menopause nighty. Yeah. And there was a lady in there saying, well, what makes it menopause? And I said, it's the fabric. It was mm. a bamboo fabric mm. Mm. and it was like sweat resistant, whatever. And I thought that would be great to give birth in, which <laughs> so I did. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it's about signposting to these things and that's Primark, you know, it's getting down to that low Which level. I, I, yeah, yeah, I saw that range launch and I, you know, hats off to them. Yeah. Fantastic. They got a lot of negative comments, mainly around the colour of the range. And I just thought, for good God, if that if that's all yeah. these people are commenting on, let's celebrate the fact that they've shown the initiative. And, yeah. I, and I know that their range is very successful because the company that produces that range is one of our partners. Right. And they've given me the insight that yeah. says that range is doing really well. So those people that criticised it, maybe they need to look at their own ranges and their own, you know, product offering. Agreed. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Yeah. Um, I th well, I think it's brilliant. And like I said, going back to maternity thing, I just thought I used to type in maternity clothes or, or whatever it might be. And it was just across every platform on every single mm uh fast fashion website that I would buy from I don't really buy from them much but when it was maternity clothes I thought well I'm not going to be in these very much I didn't, no. want, to I didn't want to invest in yeah. you know something that was going to be uh not hanging around for a while so yeah I uh I downloaded a few apps and there was absolutely loads but there's nothing in the menopause space I hope it gets better I think it is getting better mm, it will yeah, definitely. Yeah, it will. I mean, if Heather and I have got anything to do with it, it will. We will continue to inspire, encourage brands to come on board. You know, I I was saying to you earlier, um, one of the conversations that I'm having too frequently at the moment with really brilliant brands that get in touch, you know, they yeah. want to come on board, but they're all asking me questions that I can't answer right now. And I do get a little frustrated with them because we are in game-changing territory here. Uh -huh. You know, we really are. So it's not about asking questions and just sitting on the fence and waiting. Come on board. Be part of the solution. Help us answer those questions. Absolutely. And provide these solutions to women. You know, that's my key messages to businesses now. But it's great that they are getting in touch. You know, that's the starting it's point. It's crazy that they're so hesitant. I... I for me, when I heard about it, I was like 100% want to be involved. Yeah. Yes. And it was like not a big yes for me. You've put out the invisibility report. And I was like, anyone who's reading this and not using it in their marketing material, mm. it would be absolutely crazy. Mm. Like, why aren't you like whole, like reading this and thinking, I know it sparked a thousand kind of marketing ideas for me. Mm. And I thought that is what my customer wants. Yeah. I'm reading it. Yeah. Use it. Yeah. How anybody is not jumping on board mm. is beyond me, yeah. but I don't know. Well, I am a bit biased, of course, because the data just underpins everything yeah. that we do. And we we have an annual report every year exclusive to the collective. The data is invaluable because mm. it's so objective, it's irrefutable, and it does provide that credibility that we were talking about. And it's there to inspire brands like yours for the year ahead. And it's also there to inspire Gen M as to how we can continue to provide that thought-provoking content for our for our brands. But um, it is all about the power of the collective. No one brand's going to solve this on their own. No. And it's really fantastic to see the number of collaborations that are already happening. Yeah. You know, we've got our portal now, yeah. as you know, and you're you're collaborating with some fantastic brands. Yeah, we it's, chat we chat to all the other brands in the it's collective. It's great. Yeah. That's why we set this up we want to see that and we want brands to collaborate come together do stuff together it's fantastic and there will be great momentum if we can all continue down that road I'm, I'm convinced of it yeah 100 mm. percent so it's uh in October it's menopause awareness month it is what have you got planned for that we have got as we always do every October we have a campaign for the collective the campaign this year is really designed and creative created for all of our partners. So regardless of your shape and size, 
there is something there for everybody. World Menopause Month is now really busy. It's really noisy. And I think if you are just one brand trying to get a point across, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. So our idea is that all of our brands in the collective, and we'll be over 90 by October, they all can use this campaign, which um, we will launch in uh, October beginning first, very excited. And we've also created a toolkit of ideas. So we've got internal ideas. If you're a larger organization like the Royal Mail or Next or Boots, we've got some brilliant ideas for you to use internally. We've got some external ideas as well. So if you are an LK Bennett or another uh, fashion premium brand, some super ideas in the mix there. And then, of course, we've got our social assets that hopefully all brands will get behind and really, uh, really, you know, as I say, deploy this message, um, which is all going to be around raising awareness for the symptoms with a really cool hashtag. As I say, I'm, I'm really excited to see it come to life. Oh, that's exciting. Mm. Yeah. Okay, good. So I'm looking forward to October. Don't know what we've got planned in our, in our marketing funnel, but because it's always like, <sighs> we could be more prepared, but it's usually last minute. Well, we do it the I night know, before. <laughs> I know, but I'm speaking to Kelly and, um, you know, we've got it. We've got it a little earlier this year. We yeah. launched it at the Thought Leader in July, so we need to give brands time to yeah. plan. October comes around so quickly, so we're we're earlier this year. So hopefully, there's plenty in the mix that can really help you get organised for October. Brilliant. Mm. And what's next for Gen M? What so, do you want to? Where's the ambition? What's the kind of like long term? What plan? outside of world domination? Yeah, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, we want to get bigger and bolder uh, within the UK. The UK was always going to be a pilot, yeah. and we're twenty months old, and we've got a very successful pilot. So we're we're dead chuffed with that, but we're not satisfied with where we are. We've set the bar really high. So it's more brands on board. It's more research, deeper research, better insights. We want to continue with that. We want to continue to provide great materials to inspire a phenomenal campaign every October. We have our awards. We want to continue all of our partners to, um, to come on board with the awards because it's their opportunity to shine a spotlight on all the great stuff they're doing, no matter how small. And the entries into the awards this year blew us away. So we want that to get bigger and bolder. It goes without saying we want more brands deploying the MTIC. You know, we want it to be in four, four or five years max as globally recognized as the vegan V. So that is, that's a lot of brands and we yeah. will be pushing for that. We're going into the US at the end of the year. Amazing. So we've already got a number of US brands on board, but we are really enjoying uh, being invited to speak. So we're doing quite a number of keynote speeches now at various events. And it's where it's there when we speak and we talk about the opportunity for businesses and brands that you see the audience really sit up. Uh, so we want to do more of that both here across Europe and in the US. So basically more of the same, but bigger and better. But I think the US will be a really interesting toe in the water for us to see where that goes. Gen M is having a real, well, we're feeling a real pull from the US for Gen M. No one is doing anything like that over no. there. Brands are ready for us um, there. It, and so When you get in front of these people, it's almost like you're giving them like free financial advice. You're literally telling them, this is the market. This is how underserved mm. they are. This is almost yeah. like the disposable income that this kind of category has. Yeah. And it's all Definitely. to play for. It's a blueprint. You Absolutely. know, and, and I, you know, for fear of sounding a bit arrogant, it is exactly that. Yeah. Here is your blueprint. Yeah. Here is your package. Come on board. The fees that we charge to come on board, we've kept so low mm. because we did not want that to be a barrier. And I think when you look at what you get, the research alone is worth thousands for yeah. any company interested in this audience and getting it right, as we've discussed. So yeah, I, I think we'll look at different geographies. We've had some brilliant conversations with brands in India, uh, certainly Australia. That's another fantastic, innovative space. It certainly was in the food and drink mm. industry. It certainly will be in the menopause space as well. So I think there is all sorts of uh, exciting 
irons in the fire. What we've got to do is work out how we do it sustainably and in in, in an enduring way yeah. um, because we are, of course, still a small team but growing, uh, which, is, which is just great. Yeah. Well, you know all about how to get a startup going and growing. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I have been round. I, this isn't my first rodeo on that. So hopefully I've got some brilliant experience in my innocent days to, uh, to do just that. And I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, amazing. Mm. Amazing. Well, I think that's a perfect place to wrap it up. So thank you very much, Sam. Thank you for having me. It's thank been you. great talking to you. Thanks.